So we live. All right. Hey, everybody. Johnny Mo here uh, with my friend David Childers from Keeping Current Matters with our um, what do we do this bi monthly update, monthly update of the market every couple of weeks? Yeah, a couple, couple times a month we try to get together. It's been, uh, you know, with different commitments we've had and you know, different things, uh, but but try to do it a couple times a month. Yep. And listen, I am a I don't want to say I'm a, like a nerd when it comes to numbers or anything else like that. I need the bullet point high level review of what's going on. And that's what David brings. He brings a whole bunch of great information. They have thousands of people that work for them, digging up information to, to make their machine work. And we're going to talk about some of that. We're going to open it up with foreclosures and what's going on in the talk around foreclosures and what is some of the data that's out there. And we'll probably even touch on another F word forbearance. So let's jump into that. What are you seeing out there, David? Yeah, I think there's, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot right now, you know, foreclosures, forbearance, you know, I spent an hour with KCM members, it's on the, the Keeping Current Matters Facebook page, people can go look at it, spent an hour talking about this, this week, and I even see, you know, here uh, in Lab Code Agents, when that question is posed, you know, do you think we're heading into a foreclosure crisis, People jump on, people talk about it. It's something certainly in our business that's being talked about, you know, on YouTube, other places, people saying, hey, there's a crash impending coming. So uh, what I want to do is just continue that conversation, Some give you the latest information on it, uh, give you the data, because I think it's a topic that we need to, you know, first of all, nobody has a crystal ball, Johnny, you know that, you know, we can't yeah. say what's going to happen tomorrow. Heck, I mean, you, you know, in some of this, we can't say what's happening next week. People are trying to look at predictions for, you know, a year or two from now, but we can look at where where are we at now? What does the data tell us? And, you know, how is this thing playing out? Because, you know, the, the, the interesting thing um, is we, as we talk about this, the initial projections around forbearance were that, you know, 30% of mortgages were going to go into forbearance and every one of them was going to turn into a foreclosure. That was kind of the front end talk in the business and around a lot of people that were very, very concerned about it. Well, it never, never really manifests that well. About 8% of mortgages, you know, uh, uh, turned into forbearance and, and that number has been dropping. So I'll bring some of that. We'll talk about the people that are coming out and we'll talk about some more likely scenarios that, that start to manifest through that. So that, that'll be fun. But, um, you know, I think it's certainly a topic that we all want to talk about. And, and my encouragement would to you would be, I, I'll give all the, um, you know, slides uh, to you guys. We want you to be able to use those and be able to bring some facts and data, like you said, Johnny, to, to the conversation versus just an opinion or a speculation or whatever, because everybody's got that. So um, I'll share my screen and, uh, and let's, let's kind of, let's kind of talk through this. So th this is a look, uh, Johnny, at the number of mortgages in active forbearance. And you can just see there with the trend line uh, that they're decreasing and have done so quite dramatically as we've gone through the last several months, where That's the last one on the far right, if you can see that, about 2.74 million mortgages uh, in this country in active forbearance. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, certainly a number we want to see drop uh, the purpose has been to help, you know, folks weather the storm relative to their housing payment. And it, it, it looks like it's doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. and that is a, that is a good thing. Now, the, the question that starts to form mm -hmm. is, okay, going into next year is people that extended their forbearance as they start to come off what is happening. We have our kind of our first look at that. A, a new report came out from MBA this past week, the Mortgage Bankers Association, uh, oh. that really gave a br great breakdown that I want to go through uh, for you. So if you take a look at this, this is uh, folks that exited their forbearance plan and what happened to them at that point. So if we start with kind of the green side of this this uh, this circle at the top there, thirty point six percent of them made their payments and you, you know took forbearance, but actually continued to make their payments uh, during it almost as an insurance policy to say, hey, I don't know if I'm going to need this or not, but I'm going to kind of kind of hang on to it. Um, Seven point one percent of the loans were actually paid off, either you know through actually paying them off or you know a sale of the home or whatever the case may be. Uh, and almost 17%, 16.9 were past due and then brought current. You know, this might have been somebody who's a business owner that said, hey, look, I'm going to hang on to my cash right now. Coming out of forbearance, I paid that off. I didn't need to use it. My business made it through that, let's say, hypothetically, and uh, and they move on down the road. That's 54.6, if you see in the upper left-hand corner, that came out paid in full uh, in, uh, in forbearance. 
Uh, if you look at the, the, the blue area there, um, 23.9, almost 24% in some type of loan deferral. Think about this as tacking payments on the back end uh, of the mortgage. We've heard talk of that. You know, if, if you remember the, the start of forbearance was, hey, you're going to miss these uh, three months of payments and you got to make them all up. Well, that, that wasn't the case. Banks are saying, hey, you can tack them on the end and other types of uh, deferrals. Uh, 6.8 have gone through, 6.8% have gone through some type of modification. You know, I mean, with interest rates right now, you, know, you go through a refinance bank and say, look, we're going to modify your loan. You're going to pay it back this way. And here's how it's all going to play out. So that's another 30% that are in some form of, uh, of repayment plan. So um, the large majority either paid off in some kind of repayment plan. Uh, in red, there are the ones that are in question, uh, about 2%, uh, you know, short sales, deed and loot so far that we could tell. And 12.8%, they have no loss mitigation plan. They're they are delinquent. We don't know. Those are the ones that would be, you know, candidates for uh, some type of distress sale, some type of, uh, you know, um, uh, situation where they went into potentially foreclosure. I'm not saying all of those are going into foreclosure, but those are the ones we have to watch and we have to say, okay, what, you know, what's going to happen there? Understood. So the, the and I'll and I'll I'll kind of do some math for you here in just a second, but I want to pause because the 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 moral of the story there, I, I think we can look at the data and say this is it's playing out very differently than what prognosticators and folks said along the way. And if there's anything I would bring to you uh, in our business today is use the data and the facts and be encouraged by that versus a you know a doomsday scenario where everybody's gonna go into foreclosure, you know, foreclosure that went into forbearance. Sure. Um, quick, two two questions here. One is mine. One is from Brad that is asking online here. Okay. That fourteen point seven percent that yep. is in trouble. Is that based upon the two point four current number or the four point seven original number? These are people that are coming at once their forbearance plan has ended. Okay. I got you. So okay. These are people that are coming out that, that were in the plan. Okay, so, so what we're trying to do is say, okay, this is indicative of those that are coming off of forbearance and what has happened so far. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So does that mean that there is a potential that 15% of this market or the 14.7 in trouble, probable of selling, do you think, in the coming year? Um, I think those are the ones that, that have a question mark on them. Some of those, no doubt, will you know, weather the storm and move on down the road. Some of those probably, you know, the, the moral of the story here uh, through this pandemic and housing, the winning uh, uh, reason is equity, right? So um, some of those people will go, you know, we can't hold on the home. We didn't get our job back. That unfortunately happens, uh, you know, in, in this country, uh, in our business. We don't want to see it happen to anybody. Um, but, but some of those folks will be able to sell and then some of those will go into, into foreclosure. Um, and that's that's the pool right now that we would have a question mark on and say, you know, uh, if that were to happen going forward, what would that, you know, what would that mean? Understood. Brad has a question on the Zoom. Is there a normal number of late mortgages so we know when the forbearance line reaches the same line as the usual late payments? Is there a matrix for that? Say that one more time. I'm not sure I understood it. Is there a normal number for late mortgages? So I think that is the benchmark of the question. Is there a normal number? Is there any kind of metrics that? So we know when the forbearance line reaches the same line as the usual late payment. Yeah. Let's talk about that relative to foreclosures. I'm going to... Um, let me pull up another show because I've got a, I've got a great visual to show that the way that they look at late are 30, 60, 90, right? Uh, and, and we know in our business, somebody goes 90% late. The reality of them, go, you know, curing that mortgage or making that payment is extremely low. Um, mm -hmm. Now I don't have off the top of my head. What are the, what are the par rates? Now I can certainly talk to, talk to the, uh, fact of what does that mean for foreclosures historically? Let me let me share this graphic with you. Um, this is a look at, and some of you that were on last week may have seen this. I walked through it. This is a look of 
uh, foreclosures by quarter in the U.S. going all the way back to 1999. And I've kind of highlighted in the middle there the foreclosure crisis of 2008, just to give you perspective on it. Now, in the height of 2008, you're seeing per quarter, um, you know, over half a million mortgages going into foreclosure, very, very high number. The bottom towards the, the, the right, the line towards the right, you see the 206,000 number there, Johnny? Yep. That is the average number of foreclosures per quarter in this country going all the way back to 1999. So the average would be 200,000 per quarter, where we finished the most recent data, the second quarter of this year, 23,900 foreclosures because of the foreclosure moratorium. The reason I bring that up is that is the average uh, that, that, that we've seen over the past 20 years. You'll get roughly 24,000 in the second quarter. I would fully expect headlines to say foreclosures are doubling, foreclosures are tripling, foreclosures are, that number could go up eight and a half times before it hit the average of the last 20 years. I'm not sitting here arguing or, or forecasting that's what's going to happen. I'm just giving you perspective so that you can have that conversation with people relative to you know what's going on. And this is a conversation that I think you as a professional need to be knowledgeable of because your consumers are going to be asking you these questions. And if they're not asking you these questions, then you can actually at a cocktail party with your mask on, have this conversation and bring up these points, right? So it can make you that much more intelligent. I think us as professionals need to be professional with the data. People are looking at us to be professional with that data, to understand what market trends are doing, to, under, to, to say, hey, no, 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 this is the real research. And that's what you guys provide. That's what I love. Yeah. It, it, it'll give you perspective, right? This is, everybody's got an opinion, but this is pulling opinions out and saying, hey, this is what's going on right now. So the, the, the next thing I'll say is this, um, uh, you know, if we look at all of that information, what we want to then go is kind of put it in perspective for people. And I, I've got another slide here that, that I'll give you that, that puts it in perspective. And it compares October this year to October last year, okay? Um, last year in October, across the country, um, 1.5 million uh, single-family homes on the market. This year, we know we, we, we lack inventory, significant, uh, you know, uh, loss of inventory through the pandemic as people have, you know, rushed to, to buy a home with low interest rates. 1.2 million homes on the market. If we take our current number and we said, okay, if, 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 if those uh, you know, all of those people we talked about that were in trouble, and I'm going to call it 15%, it was 14.7%. Again, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if they did, let's play the conservative number, hmm. that, that would bring 411,000 homes on the market, bringing us just above where we were last October. And my money says if 400,000 homes came on the market right now, whether they be foreclosures, sales, whatever they were, they'd be snapped up in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> just because of the, the current reality. So when, you know, when it, and if you want more information on this, again, I spent an hour on it talking uh, on the KCM uh, Facebook page, the numbers just don't play out. I mean, people, you know, are very, very concerned about it and rightfully so. I think it has to do with the, you know, what we remember from the housing crisis. But if you start to look at the numbers, it just, it's just not there. Since we're talking about the dirty world of the default world, let's, yeah. um, talk about short sales. What do you see? I know there's a curveball. Um, you might have it, you might not, but what are you seeing as far as the pinnacle of price? Because price keeps going up. I mean, we're seeing bidding wars, $100,000 over in some areas. I think that's absolutely crazy. It's all relative, right? If it's a million dollar house, it's different. Sure. Um, sure. But we're seeing, we're seeing bidding wars. We're seeing people sure. pay anywhere from 2,000 to a ridiculous amount over average 20, maybe thousand. What is, um, where, what's your thought on price and the peak of the price? Are, are, we, are we slowing down? Are we still driving fast like a spaceship? Well, you know, that's a question that a lot of people are going to start asking. Okay, so as we move into next year, as, um, you know, as an agent, that's what we need to be prepared to talk about. And, and the, really the way that comes out of the consumer is, should I buy right now at the top of the market? right? That's the natural thought there. There's a couple of things and we're working on a lot of this at KCM right now. I literally came out of a research meeting yesterday 
um, that I'll, I'll share a little bit of it with you because we're, we're, we're building this up. So, you, you know, as you start, there are a couple things forming right now. If you look at the degree of incline that we were at in appreciation going into the housing crisis in 2008, we're in a similar incline layer. I'm not saying that we're heading towards the same place, but it brings that question. Sure. What you're going to see as headlines is that mortgage debt is at an all time high close to $10 trillion in this country. Okay, so just park that in the, the back of your brain right now. Expect to see that, expect to see the news and folks talking about mortgage debts at all time high. Here we go again, we're about to all, this house is about to crumble. Um, well, there's there's a lot of reasons for that. There are more homes today than there've ever been before and homes appreciate, so we have to keep that in mind. What you really wanna look at is debt service level. And that is the amount of money uh, uh, committed to a payment as compared to income. And what I can tell you right now um, is that that is at a lower point than it was in the early 2000s and even in the 90s. So Mm -hmm. top level, there are a lot of people that are going to sound the alarm, but when you dig deeper into the numbers, um, it, it doesn't show a market that is overblown. Now, you ask about short sales. Um, I don't know that we're in a place we're going to see short sales coming up here because, again, there's so much equity in homes across the country. And, and there's a specific reason for that, Johnny. I mean, it's an, it's an anecdotal reason we can talk about in our business all we want to from the number standpoint. But here's the reason. There were a lot of people in 2008, and I'm, I'm going to sign up. I was one of them in our business that um, over leveraged themselves. And they said, I don't want that happening to my family again. You and I both pay down our mortgage. We're going to do something. We're going to do this one different. You know, we have short exactly. memories here in this country, but on that one, we're like, ah, I learned my lesson. I'm good. And there's a lot of equity in homes today. You know, the, the latest numbers show less than 1% of homes being underwater uh, relative to their financing. That's so I just, great. I don't see it. Is it going to happen? Sure. But is it going to be a, you know, back, um, back in 2010, I work for the largest holder of REO properties in this country, and that was a strategy, you know, to become an REO agent and, and do that. It's not going to be a, you know, something that's going to be a strategy, uh, you know, going forward. You know, it'd be interesting. You, you talk about equity and, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of people. I don't know if you all have these numbers. I don't expect you to have this handy, but you, you're miraculous. So. Nah. <laughs> um but the number of homes bought, what would you say the market crash was really 2008 to 2011, 12? That's really where the majority of them were. Sure. You mean as far as uh, folks that went into closures, the REOs? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, you can, look, you can look at that graph that I just flashed up there. It's that, that really starts at 08 and goes into, I think the peak of the market was like February of uh, 2012. You know, yeah, that's a fantastic time that whole time. But I would love to see, I don't know if you all have this the amount of homes that are still owned or sold, I guess is the reverse way to look at it compared to purchase during that time. Cause I think that would be, I think that would in a weird way, there's a way to find out what that potential equity would have been right. Based on a national average. So if they, if it's 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, whatever that number of homes, that's, I think if the people were smart and they didn't re refi and take the money out and everything like that, uh, that that's a big wealth gain right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we, we do have that data. I don't have it at the top of my head, but I can get it for you. Um, and what you're talking about, uh, NAR produces that data. Like if you today, if you bought a home five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, what is your equity gain if you sold it today? Because, you know, the story you, you used to be, well, if you bought a house in 2006 or, you know, in the ride up or right at the pinnacle, if you didn't make any money. Well, the reality is, is people today that even bought homes then, uh, have equity in their homes. Not as much as somebody maybe that bought in 2010 or 11, but, yeah. uh, but, but they certainly do. But it's, a, it's, they're fascinating numbers when you start to look at them. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it up. I think last time I talked to you, I asked a question. I, I still think it's too early to see any fallout from it. We had an election. I was always like, is anybody, you know, worried about the election? And this is unbiased, right? I don't buy into the political thing of pol- politics because it's comical. Um, yeah. But have we seen any data 
at all. That's a, a perfect setup to my next section. So I know you have it. You have it. And Johnny hasn't seen the slides, everybody. So that was best perfect because I'm going to talk about that right now. Okay? We're vibing, man. Go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go through these real quick because it'll answer your question. It'll give you some good information. You know, a lot of us maybe, you know, whether virtually or in person will be around folks uh, in the next week as we celebrate Thanksgiving. This will give you some stuff to maybe talk about. First one I want to want to talk about is this quote here. It just is very interesting. When volatile assets are facing Facing recession, hard assets such as gold and real estate thrive. That's been the case certainly this year. Historically speaking, residential real estate has done better compared to all other markets during and after the recession. There's certainly businesses right now uh, that aren't doing as well, Johnny, um, but we are lucky to be in a business that has thrived in 2020. So certainly grateful for that. And those of us that lived through 2008 know, like, know what it's like to be in a business that's at the epicenter of the, of the crash and, and it's mm -hmm. quite different this time. So to kind of answer your question, let's look here at the NARB market, uh, housing market recovery index. Um, it looks at demand, supply, price, time on market. You can see that dip. I'll use my cursor right here. Um, that is the, the couple weeks of the election. And certainly I think people um, kind of said, let's see how this all shakes out uh, on a national scale. Now there's, there's probably people watching going, that's not happening in my market. And certainly way in here on, uh, you, you know, uh, comment if that, if you're seeing, if you saw a little slowdown, if you're seeing people come back or what's happening where you're at, but nationally speaking, we did see a little bit of a, a you know, a, a pause, I'll call it in folks looking, but uh, move.com quote that just came out, Buyers and sellers quickly jump back into the market this week after taking a break during the election week, according to Realtor.com's weekly housing report for the week ending uh, November 14th. So a little bit of pause. You know, the way I always explain that is it's, uh, you know, the restaurant business is the best analogy. And, you know, you may have heard me say this before, Johnny, but uh, this Friday night, if, you know, um, a restaurant in your town is uh, closed and can't serve you dinner, um, that doesn't mean that you and your family don't eat. You, you eat at home, you eat somewhere else, you, you, yeah. you have that meal. We roll into to tomorrow and they don't have a chance to recoup that business. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how the restaurant business works, right? They miss that meal, they miss that, they, they lose that business. Uh, in real estate, we're not like that. If somebody puts their hands in their pockets and they say, you know what, things are a little crazy with the election or my person lost or won or whatever the case may be, they go, I'm gonna wait right now and that just gets delayed. And so we're seeing it right now with folks coming back into the market after gotcha. taking a week or so off. Interesting, yeah, a lot of weird energy out there anyways. But what's real interesting was your first graph that you had, it peaked up and then you had the uh, V on the next one. Yeah. And it, it, that's a perfect representation. And to me, scientific proof, you got this going on that way and this going on that way they, they match up on time frame and everything else yeah yeah so so it definitely shows that folks put their hands in their pockets for a couple of weeks and said we will we'll wait and see how this shakes out and again given the political climate that's that's not a surprise we talked extensively about this before if you've been uh following and uh and watching these that we do every couple of months uh, we talk about the impact of the election traditionally that's what's happened in this country in an election year but again my encouragement to you would be that we don't lose that business it just gets delayed people say you know what now we are um which means uh, y'all you need to follow up I even I put the graph up, up again please i don't know which graph uh you're talking about the graph of um of the nar index i'll put the graph of the nar index up here real quick again So that is, and I'll, I'll give these to uh, to lab code agents of Tristan. Uh, he can get them out to everybody. So you guys have uh, uh, these graphs and these visuals to be able to use. But this is the housing market recovery index um, that, that measures uh, demand, supply, price, time on markets. Good, good, you know, index uh, given the the slowdown and everything kind of going on in our business this year. But let me let me show you a couple other things that I think are very interesting about the market. Um, you know, again that that quote that we used. Third uh, month in a row, builder confidence has set a record, um, wow. and uh, so builders extremely extremely confident. You know this. This question of we want to sell our home, but we don't know where we're going to go is answered by, you know, many builders that say, hey, we'll build you a house and you can kind of plan this out. Uh, and new construction numbers right now 
uh, are, are destroying last year's numbers. Uh, housing starts up 29%, housing permits up 21%. Uh, you know, I know there are different opinions about it, but but being able to partner with a builder in your community uh, as an outlet for those that are that are looking for uh, for a place to move to or or something to buy is uh, is what where you want to be right now. It's a very very um, interesting statistic as a leading indicator of of inventory coming to market because the if we look at a snapshot of everything happening right now you see a lot of green you see some red the red over there is inventory we're down in existing home inventory but not quite as much down in new home inventory that's coming back you know and if there's anything that, that we've been in a drought for in the last uh gosh 10 years it's been you know new home inventory because of, of the way you know builders got clobbered in uh, in the housing crisis but you look at all that green right there, showings are up, uh, purchase applications, that's mortgage applications are up, uh, pending deals, existing home sales, new home sales, all of those up year over year and continue to stay up. Um, you know, I'll end with this, Johnny, before I know you've got questions probably and others have questions. The biggest news of this week was um, you know, 30, average 30 year fixed hit the lowest point of the year for the 13th time which is shocking. Average 30 year fix. Free is money, man. Seven, two percent across the country, which again, you know, um, you never know when um, uh, when you're at the bottom until you look at it in the rearview mirror. But I, I think we could be, you know, close to the bottom because the market is starting to look for more, um, you know, news about vaccines. The market's being fueled by hope and optimism versus fear of, what's going to come out next and how can we, you know, contract the coronavirus in a way we didn't even know. Now we've turned a corner to say, okay, we're seeing a vaccine coming. We're hearing yeah. it's going to be here. The market's looking for that information going forward. Remember an approving economy will bring with it rates tricking up. Now I'm not sitting here saying that, you know, rates are going to go through the roof tomorrow, but, uh, but I, I think we, you know, we could see rates start to start to go back up. Sure. And I'm, I'm happy to see that about the new construction because new construction got hit hard. Yeah. Lumber price is double, quadruple sometimes of what it was just a few years ago. You know, you, yeah, you think doubled, about it's, Yeah, it's doubled. It's come down uh, just a little bit off that in the last month or so. Our team yeah. tracks that and we look at that every uh, week. We, we've seen a little bit of relief in that and hopefully, you know, we can see relief with that. A lot of that was due to a lot of people think tariffs. But that was due to shutdowns um, during the the lockdown and mills not being able to, to to move back to full capacity to produce lumber and the overwhelming demand. Builders are building. Everybody and their brother is trying to add an addition or do something to their home. And there's wow. a spike for demand in lumber and mills aren't producing at 100 percent. So as we get closer to, you know, to to better news and, and mills get back up to speed, you know, we we should see uh, improvement there. I just want to say this to everybody listening or who will re-listen about what David mentioned a minute ago about, you know, partnering with a builder. I, I know that they're territorial and not all builders will do this. They have their own in-house staff. But if, if the builder will allow you to, even if you he won't sign a contract with you, allow you to go make videos there of the different homes of the neighborhood and everything else like that. And you market that, that's gonna allow you to attract buyers that you can then bring to said builder who allowed you to do this. Now this is thinking builders, I mean, if you sign a contract today, you're not gonna be in that house for probably a year, right? So this is your future business. This isn't now, now business. This is future business. But um, if, if you're able to put a few new constructions in the book for a year down the road, it's a good place to be in a year down the road. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So it, that's I, I awesome. Bring some of the relief in inventory too, right? You know, if we can build those relationships, if we could do that and do good business there, um, then, then I think it, it's a good outlook for folks. Yep. So as always, Johnny, I love coming on and spending a few minutes uh, with everybody and grateful for, you know, as we go into Thanksgiving, I'm just grateful for lab coat and all the hard work that you guys do to, to bring everybody together. So thank you for that. Ah, I'm just part of the, I'm just a cog, bro. And uh, thank you for coming. I know taking your time out and I've always believed in your product. Everybody should have it. The best part about it, the two best parts about it. It's a lot of awesome information, 
for a short amount of money. <laughs> I'll spend more on your lunch today than what it costs. That's true. It's twenty nine dollars a month. It's uh, it's it's. I, I always tell people, if you find somebody who'll do all this cheaper for you, let us know because we right. might subscribe. So, how many hours goes into one of those reports? Well, the report that you had showed. I mean, well, I'll tell you, we have seven people on our team that that, that do the research, writing, and compile these insights full time. So, so uh, you're hiring his team for twenty nine bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and listen, they're way smarter than I am. So it's uh, uh, they do a phenomenal job and grateful for the you know thirty it was thirty people in the entire team KCM that puts all this information together, you know wow. uh, for everybody so that you have it Johnny to your point so that you can talk in an educated way about the market and what's happening. That's fantastic. Utilize this is leverage. This is leverage. Utilizing all these people's talents to get this information. Absolutely. So you can be knowledgeable. Awesome. What's the website? And then we'll end it on that because I know if we're ha one minute over yeah, the half. The top of the hour. It's try. So T R Y K C M dot com. Try keeping current matters dot com. So uh, awesome. if you go to try KCM dot com. You can do it free for four uh, for two weeks uh, and see if it's right for you. You know, so it doesn't cost you anything. You get access to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you haven't done that, go do it. Go do it. Awesome, David, Thank as you. always, and I won't Have a great see you Friday afternoon. We are grateful for, for the support, grateful for what you do. Awesome. Happy Thanksgiving and peace. Take care, guys. Bye.